Hello everyone. So on to section two of chapter one. Section one, we talked about the benefits of planning, just kind of the basics of finance, that everyone should have a plan. Then moved on to the different types of goals and the needs in which we obtain from setting goals and those are your goods, services, and, and the tangible items. And now we're at the point where Whenever you make a choice, okay, you give something up. And that trade-off, that's something up that you're giving. That trade-off is an what's called an opportunity cost. All right. And that's where we are going to start. So opportunity cost, that is your trade-off. What is giving up when making one choice instead of another? And we have, of course, just like goals, a personal opportunity cost. So for an example, if you decide to go on St. George Avenue and buy four Big Macs at McDonald's, your trade-off is you can enjoy those Big Macs, but the trade-off is having good health. Okay, You can go to a concert and you know have a good time, but your trade-off will be not getting enough sleep for the next day. Okay, So that would be a type of personal trade-off. And you also have trade-offs or opportunity costs financially. So you can go right now to Menlo Mall and spend $100, $200. Or the trade-off could be saving that money in a bank or obtaining interest on that money. Whatever trade-off that you can come up with. All right. With opportunity costs, you want to consider what's called the time value of money. This is the math section of the math part, I should say, of this check of this section. Where the time value of money states that money will be worth more later because you can invest and earn interest and what stocks earn dividends. That's why they're saying a dollar today is worth more than a dollar tomorrow because most people, you may think a dollar, if I gave you a dollar right now, I give you a dollar tomorrow, next week, next month, it's still a dollar. That is true. But what you can do with that dollar today is invest. So then next week, that dollar might end up be becoming $3 because you invested in a account in the bank. In a month, that dollar might turn into $10. Okay, so talking about the time value of money, and that's where we get into the math part. And in the math part, we're calculating interest. And I give you a simple here of just a simple interest calculation before you move on present value and future value. Okay, with calculating interest, you have your principal, which is just the original amount that you're depositing. You have your interest rate, which is how much interest you earn. And note here it says annual, so annual meaning yearly. So we have a yearly interest rate, which is noted as a percentage. And of course, your length of time. How long are we going to have that amount of money invested for? So usually just to calculate interest, it's just principal times the interest rate. So the example I have here. $1,000 in a savings account, you deposit $1,000 into a savings account for one year with 3% annual interest rate. All right, we have our principal, which is $1,000. We have our interest rate, which is 3% or 0 0.03. Just move the decimal over to the left twice. And you earn 30 bucks. At the end of one year, in your bank account, you have $1,030. All right, a very simple interest calculation. And this is going to be the stepping stone for what we'll cover in class. This is where we're going to end today, okay? But in class, we'll be talking about calculating the future value, which essentially says is the amount your original deposit will be worth in the future, okay? So, for example, that $1,000 question we just answered, we would calculate its future value if we were depositing it in an account that would maybe earn us 8%, and we want to know how much it's going to be worth after five years. Okay, there's a very long drawn out step process, but we have a chart that makes it easier for us. So tomorrow in class, we're going to go over future value and go over what's called the present value, which essentially is the reverse. So that the present value tells us what is the money we would need to deposit now, not what it will be, what it will become like future value. Present value tells us how much do you need right now in the present. Okay, if you're going to invest in it in so many years at a certain rate 
in order to have a certain amount that you desire in the future. And what these two present, future value, present value will be based off of, it's your same interest rate question you just answered, but it's using this chart. All right? You don't have to copy this chart down. You don't have to memorize it. Tomorrow in class, we're going to go more into detail. All right? Make sure with this video, everything in the boxes you're copying down. All right? And now go ahead and complete the WSQ for Chapter 1, Section 2.